everyone gets scared of cooking lavender, but this is how you make a good lavender ice cream. Steeping it in the honey, we get such a fresh, bright, beautiful flavor. This is the perfect honey lavender ice cream. Hi, I'm Tyler Malik, the head ice cream maker here at Salt and & Straw, and I've got a very, very delicious and really simple recipe. We're gonna make a honey lavender ice cream. If you want some more, subscribe below, where we're gonna make boysenberry oat milk sherbet and a birthday cake and blackberry ice cream. So we need to make the perfect ice cream base for this honey lavender ice cream. This is a really, really simple way of making ice cream base. Also, there's some nuances in regards to the ingredients that we're using and how we combine everything. So first of all, I've got milk, heavy cream. They're in one-to-one -one ratio, so I want that perfect ratio of the fat from the cream and kind of the flavor from the milk. I've got cane sugar, going to give us a lot of that sweetness, but also some of the antifreeze. I've got tapioca syrup. You can use an organic corn syrup, but honestly, any type of invert sugar is gonna give us just a new kind of like a more complex texture. A little bit of starch from that is gonna help the ice cream freeze really nicely. And then I've got two ingredients that are maybe a little bit more obscure but really easy to find. This is dry milk powder. This is actually gonna give us more of that kind of intense milky flavor in our ice cream. And then I'm gonna add just a dash of xanthan gum. Xanthan gum is uh, scary because it starts with an X. I, it's just really bad branding on this stuff but it really is an incredible egg replacer really commonly used, especially in like vegan recipes. It's gonna give us a nice clean flavor, but it's gonna also give us kind of that unctuous texture that egg yolks would do if we're making a custard. I'm gonna add my milk, my tapioca syrup, combine my xanthan with sugar and the milk solids in advance. So this will actually kind of allow that to hydrate a little bit better. And I'll put that in with the milk. And really what I'm gonna do is I'm combining everything except for the heavy cream. Because what I need to do is I need to cook this just ever so slightly just to melt that sugar into the milk. I don't want to cook my cream because I don't want to mess up the fats in this. If I heat fats, they're going to kind of start to unravel. So I'm going to keep this cream as cold as possible for as long as possible. So what we'll do is we'll take just the milk and the sugars and the xanthan and the milk solids and heat these up. So I've got my milk, my sugar. I'm going to cook this ever so slightly. This won't quite come to a boil. All I really am looking for is the sugar to melt in. So every once in a while I can kind of look at the bottom of the pan and see if the sugar is still kind of granulated or if it's melted in. I'm gonna sit here for maybe two to three minutes on medium high heat, stirring constantly. And you can kind of just see once everything's kind of melted in there. So I lightly heated for a couple minutes that milk and sugar mixture. And I'm gonna combine that with my cold cream. And this is ice cream base. It's still warm. So I'm gonna put this in the cooler for 24 hours. And for our honey lavender ice cream, I've got some that I prepped yesterday. This is gonna be such a simple recipe. You can see there's only three ingredients here. I've got a little bit of water and a lot of honey. And I've got some dried lavender petals. This recipe is especially cool because what we're doing is we're extracting more of the tea quality flavors from the lavender. Really distinctly different from if we were steeping it in something like cream where the fat is gonna pull out more of the soapy qualities. Steeping it in honey and water, I think just kind of brings out a fresh flavor from that lavender. This is also neat because you can actually replicate the same technique with a lot of other ingredients, bay leaves, hop leaves, really anything you can think of, you can extract like this really beautiful quality from those herbs. I'm just gonna quickly bring this to a boil and then I'll turn the heat off and put the lid on for it to steep. We got inspiration for making a honey lavender ice cream really from the ingredients here in Oregon. If you look at some of the fields, we've got a ton of lavender, especially out towards the wineries. And then on top of that, the honey we're getting in. For us, the honey is changing every single day, depending on where the bees are kind of pollinating. So I love the variation that you see in a flavor like this throughout the entire year. I let this honey lavender steep for about four hours, and what's cool about this, you can actually smell the intensity and like fills your entire face with lavender flavor. It's epic. What we'll do is we'll strain this out using a fine mesh strainer, or it's just gonna be left with this really, really dense kind of honey tea. This is so beautiful. This is like the most intense lavender syrup you've ever experienced in your entire life. Now, this is our ice cream base. We'll add about three cups to this lavender syrup. And then we have 
really, really delicious. Honey lavender ice cream. For me, I've got this really cool purple food coloring. It's actually derived from spent berries. It's gonna add this really beautiful color to our ice cream. There's a few different brands out in the grocery stores that also make natural purple food colorings, and it just is gonna brighten everything up and bring the sensation of the lavender forward. So I'll load this into our ice cream machine. This in particular is an internal compressor machine. It works really, really well, and I can make ice cream all day. Or you can get kind of the pre-frozen bowls where you put the, the bowl in the freezer for 24 hours, you take it out, you load it up. Those work incredibly well too. You just can't make multiple ice creams in a day. Or if you're feeling really uh, strong, you can uh, get a hand churn machine with salt and ice. I'll load this in, it'll churn for about 25 minutes. Okay. I actually churn my ice cream a lot looser than what most people would recommend. So this is almost the texture of maybe a gelato. For me, I like to load all of my ice cream into these plastic pint containers. It's kind of the same thing you'd get like a to-go soup in. But the cool thing is they seal really nicely so it's gonna keep your ice cream protected from any other flavors in your freezer. But also they're really thin so it's gonna harden the ice cream really fast. And I want this to sit in my freezer for about six to eight hours until it hardens and it's gonna be that kind of perfect scoopable texture. So, put it in the freezer. Okay, so we've had our ice cream in the freezer for about eight hours or overnight. The cool thing about ice cream is that it'll come out of the machine soft serve, but when we let it sit in the freezer, it hardens. So we're actually taking it from 25 degrees Fahrenheit all the way down to five degrees Fahrenheit, which creates kind of the perfect scoopable texture. Mm. This is the perfect ice cream flavor for so many different reasons. First of all, the honey just gives it this really round sweetness, and I love using a local honey in here. This is honestly the entire inspiration. It's leaning into the floral flavors of a good local honey. The lavender that we're steeping in, we just steep it really lightly into that syrup so that it doesn't get too soapy. We're getting more of like this elegant kind of tea quality out of the lavender. Let me know when you make it at home. There's so many different renditions, ways you can steep in different herbs. Please tell me about all of them in the comments below and subscribe so that you can see two more ice cream videos. We're making a boysenberry oat milk sherbet and birthday cakes and blackberries ice cream.